Firstly, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we have the pleasure of doing this talk today, the Turrbal people. We pay our respects to elders past and present and to emerging community leaders. And we'd also like to extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. Always will, always was, always will be. True. Um, okay, so uh, today the theme is equality. Um, it's so a biggie. It's a biggie, yeah, it's a lot. Um, so what does, what does equality mean? Um, today we're going to be touching on equality in a few different frames. So um, we're going to be talking about overcoming personal hurdles, um, values in action in small business, um, and finally creative inequality. So in terms of exposure and the other trials and tribulations that come along with that. Privilege. <laughs> um, the privilege to work for free. Exactly. It is a privilege. <laughs> um, so equality is a hugely broad topic, as we know, uh, and not something that can easily be kind of pushed into a 20-minute chat um, this early in the morning, but uh, we'll do our best. Um, we'll be sharing some nuggets from our personal experiences as women in small business, um, but I think this applies across all industries, not just great yeah, industries. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so first of all, we should give you some context about who we are and what we do. Yes. Uh, Where's the quickie? Right. Ah, ooh, fancy. Um, so my name is Vlada and I run and own a shop in West End called Junkie Comics and I've been doing that for about almost three years now, which is crazy because I yes. feel like I've aged so much <laughs> since I started. <laughs> um, it originally started online. It originally started as a joke, so just to, taken too far. A joke that was taken too far, but now I'm lucky enough to occupy this space that houses local work, indie publishers, um, like uh, self self made publications, and um, I have a really like I always really wanted to have a strong focus on local work, and so I've been lucky enough to have amazing artists put their stuff in the shop and it's turned into this, it's almost turned into like a workspace now as well, which is really cool and I've had some amazing exhibitions. Yeah, so. It's a meeting place. It's also yeah. a place where I just sit and drink in the back. <laughs> yes, we have a great courtyard where we yes. can do that. <laughs> um, but also I play in a band called Major Leagues. So I do that when I'm not doing what I do. That's what I do when I don't do what I do. Yes. Basically. <laughs> So, uh, my name is Phoebe Sheehy, um, though you may know me as Phoebe Paradise. I think you probably know why I changed it to Paradise. <laughs> I only learned how to say Phoebe's last name last night. Yeah, no, we had to I was like, is it just bit. she? Close. Was it Ed? So close, so close. <laughs> um, so, I've been uh, running a fashion label for the last three years now. Um, I started out as an illustrator designer um, doing markets and a few exhibitions, but also a lot of client work, so doing designs for bands and venues, um, something that I still do, not as much as I'd like to, but um, I am a twice uni dropout. I did TAFE for about a year, didn't stick. Did uni for about two weeks, didn't stick. Um, <laughs> but hey, that's fine. Um, and so I... Um, I started out doing these markets and I was doing screen printed t-shirts and I saw all of these bands that were doing screen printed t-shirts and they didn't have any money yet, they were still doing it and so I was like, if they can do it, I can do it, I'm going to make some for my art and so I started doing that and then it just kind of took off into this label and has been growing up since um, and I'm just about to open my flagship store in Ann Street in Fortitude Valley which I'm very excited about. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess the main reason why we wanted to do this today together yes, as a team as a team is because although we're in very different industries yeah. uh, under the under the umbrella of the creative, creative industries, industries yeah. I think we really wanted to illustrate the importance of supporting women within the creative industries absolutely because I think like We've done so much stuff together and it couldn't have happened without collaborating. No, definitely. Yeah, I think like one of the reasons we were asked to do this today as a team as well is because Blada and I met about three years ago and when you were starting the shop and um, you know, we've been working together ever since. Um, when I was <laughs> ten years younger. <laughs> <laughs> ten years younger. Like these ones are just developing, like say. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so we met about three years ago. I sent Vlada an extremely embarrassing email, just like, I really like what you do, and can we be friends, but also can you stock my stuff? I'm so nervous, I don't know what to do. And I was just like so, like, so just in love with what you were doing. And Vlada was so kind. No one had stocked my stuff yet. Um, but we went and had a coffee, and I brought my t-shirts in a garbage bag um, to the cafe, and I'm like, do you want to sell these? You were so <laughs> professional, honestly. I was like, Thank you. <laughs> this whole process of the last three years of owning this business, like, I have just been, yeah. like, barely, like, keeping my head about above water and just, like, lying about, like, knowing anything. <laughs> Which is great that I'm here today, guys. You're yeah, welcome. You're gonna, gonna um, <laughs> Okay. But you were so professional, and I think, like, the garbage bag aside, yes. it was a very... You don't need to talk about that. <laughs> it was a... The, the whole thing was so professional, and I think it it started off as stocking, but then it turned into... We've done so much stuff since then together. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, we... Yeah. yeah, we went... Um, we actually did a pop-up shop in Melbourne last year for a month. A month in the middle of winter in Melbourne. It was, it was really long, clever. cold, dark month. <laughs> but great fun. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. And then we also went up to Townsville last year. Um, we got a grant to do a workshop, uh, again, as a team to uh, talk to women about starting a creative business, which was super fun as well. Uh, very hot and humid in Townsville, but we had a good time. Lots of palm trees. So many. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, as we said, the reason why we're doing this together is because we really want to illustrate how, like, I guess working together as women and collaborating um, does nothing but actually help your business grow. And as, like, you know, for using us as an example, like, Vlada, every success that Vlada has had, um, you know, not just as a stockist but as a friend, has been, um, you know, of my success also. So we want to illustrate that today. Okay, so, talking about collaboration. Um, okay, so, women have historically um, been discouraged from entering creative fields um, because it's inherently competitive. Um, yet, ironically, we are told from birth that all women are our competition, uh, sadly. Um, so, uh, which, and this creates a really toxic environment. Um, I think that this is changing, but back in 2014, when I was sort of starting the label, um, I had a really tough time with it, um, the idea of seeing women as competition, and I'm sure a lot of women in the audience has had this struggle before as well. Um, so I got emails uh, when I was first starting out, and I'd done this collection um, by an artist who was a fan of the label. It was just like a genuine email, like trying to reach out. But she um, wanted to get my... Uh, producers, so she wanted to find out, like, you know, where I got my stuff manufactured. Um, my gut reaction was like terror when she sent me that email. I was, I was terrified of like giving my trade secrets away because um, I thought that if I gave her that information, that it, it would, would be less. Yeah, that, exactly. Be, yeah. You know, we're told that there's like this finite amount of success for women, and if another woman succeeds, then that's like it takes away from your success. You. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's this internalized misogyny that tells us um, that there is this finite amount of success and that someone else's accomplishment is ultimately your demise, um, which is bullshit, absolute bullshit. So this may be uh, old news for you guys, um, but you know, at that time, it was, it was hard for me. Uh, women's success is your success too. Every achievement of Lattice has been beneficial directly to my label. And ditto. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so building those creative networks with genuine excitement for others' achievement is like does nothing but help you. And it's the only way forward. So collaboration. Um, I've been lucky enough to collaborate with a number of women creatively um, in, in my business support network. And it has been a joy to share with them the trials and tribulations of the business, as well as the um, uh, successes. They're not my competition, but my cheerleaders, as I am to them. That's really important to me. Um, so, now I'm going to do the thing that I had so much trouble doing three years ago. Here are my manufacturers. <laughs> They're here for you to see. Otherwise, um, you can just hit up Ethical Clothing Australia. It's all on the internet anyway. They're, they're there for you. <laughs> so, this actually um, rolls into... Um, so this may look like corporate jargon, but it's something that's really important to me. When I was starting out, I was collaborating with a bunch of women. So 
One of the, the women that I was collaborating with was, and still do, Anna Diaz, who ran Diaz Label in Brisbane. She's amazing. Um, so she actually worked with me to help develop these core values. So um, I guess in creative business, there's often this tricky period where you're, you're going from hobby business into business business. Um, and this was around the time that I was developing this um, because I have my core values as a person and as an individual, but it's one thing to have those and it's another to try and apply them to your business and actually stick to it. Um, it's actually been one of the greatest, I know, difficult, like one of, one of the greatest hurdles in running a business is having those values and actually sticking to them and putting your money where your mouth is. Yeah, exactly, because you're yeah. the face of your own brand. So exactly. you're basically, you're taking what you believe in and then trying to put it into like a, in, it's a really odd thing to be able to like make your own business out of yourself. Definitely, definitely. It's kind of a bizarre yeah, thing. Especially when it's your name attached to <laughs> it. Um, so I don't need to read all of this, but basically um, with Thin Paradise, we have these three core values um, that we try to stick to in every way we strive for, um, which is inclusivity, a loyalty to local, and weird, which is, you know, just comes naturally, obviously. <laughs> um, but the loyalty to local, oh goodness, um, the loyalty to local part of it, is about um, having those manufacturers that I showed you before, which are all local producers, um, producers, printers, um, sewers, everything. Um, and then having inclusivity and making sure that those values are communicated through every stream of your business. So not just from the ground of where the stuff is made, but also how you communicate it and you know, even in, through social media. Yeah. So those are, those are important parts. Which leads on to my core values, which I kind of fluked. I was really lucky that when I started Junkie, I just had amazing people approach me. And I didn't really have to try and get a lot of, lot of local work because Brisbane's amazing. And there's so many artists that just were like putting zines under the door before it even opened. <laughs> it was great. Um, but that was something that was really important to me, like an emphasis on local artists and writers. I wanted to have a very strong LGBTI community ties, and since then I've done lots of events. Actually, over here is an event that we did uh, last year, and it was a launch for a zine called Envy Life, which was a collection of poetry, write, like, um, yeah, poetry, illustrations, and writings of non-binary people. It was such an amazing event, and someone had made like little, um, pronoun stickers and so everyone had like That's their great. little pronoun yeah. stickers it was so it was so lovely so I've been so lucky to be able to yeah be able to put these things on and have equal representation within the store which was something that was really important to me as well when I was growing up because I never really felt like I had that especially like having diversity and women of color that I could yeah. look up to so yeah I'm, I'm really lucky that I've got that and I think like one of the most important values of Junkie is supporting creative work and actually putting it to the forefront. It was one of the things that really like attracted me to Junkie as well. When I first saw you open, that, you know, there was a huge amount of diversity and the events were incredible as well, always, and still are. <laughs> I don't know how to use that. No, oh, you just click it. Do you love it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, in terms of exposure, so we had our question today, um, which is name a thing that. Do you love how I had to read that upside down? <laughs> name a thing that um, you've worked for that isn't money, and you know this applies generally just in creative work. Um, you're asked to uh, work for the privilege. Privilege. For a company. The privilege the of privilege, doing it. The exposure. Um, you know, the number of emails you get that's like, hey, we've got 15,000 Instagram followers, so, you know, just do it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But no. Uh, so, okay. So, those are the things you can, can get asked to, to work for. But I guess we want to talk about the, the idea of creative inequality and everyone's role in that. Yeah, and like creative like creativity and creative work being seen as a hobby rather than a legitimate way to make definitely money. yeah yeah so um working for free uh i've done it um my answer is beer and cigarettes because i've worked for both 
more than once. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say. <laughs> but so what would inevitably happen? Um, so when you are asked to work for free, um, what would inevitably happen for me is that I would take on too many jobs um, because I needed the money um, and they were all low paying. And so I would take them on, overload my calendar, and the result would be that I would produce subpar work, um, often like after the deadline, have like, you know, a bad relationship with the client as a result and wouldn't feel proud about the work that I was doing. So this is about like the graphic design or illustration work that I was doing at the time. Um, so I feel burnt out and uh, also neglecting the label at the same time. Um, so now what I'm trying to do is uh, my best to whole ass one thing rather than half ass a bunch of things and getting paid properly is the best way to do that. So basically clients, um, you get what you pay for, obviously, but creatives, we also get what we sign up for, you know? Um, we can be complicit in this devaluing process of creative work. Um, and it's important to note, though, that um, not all of us are in a privileged position to say no to unpaid work, right? Um, but I would posit that um, if you do work unpaid, um, to be selective about it, um, if you can, um, make those jobs that you do unpaid passion projects um, or for volunteer-run businesses like Creative Mornings, for example. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know the thing that's always just frustrated me is just this idea that people can question creative work or they have a right to say, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like they have a right to sort of say something about it or like that talent is not, talent isn't a skill? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that talent is exactly that, it's a skill. Well, this, this is the problem with the, the idea of working for free, right, is that it, it devalues the idea that creative work is work. And, you know, we've heard it all before, but it's, it's almost from this, this idea that, you know, talent is something that, creative talent at least, is something that, you know, a, a, a select number of people in the world get, like, handpicked and they get talent from birth. But creative talent is, like any skill, something that is developed, like, Input, output, the amount of hours that you put into something, the amount of talent that comes out of it. It's not a mystery. It's not a mysterious thing that just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> um, Phoebe sent me this article this morning that I, there's a great quote in there, which it was from May of 2016 after all of the arts funding cuts. And it was an article on ABC Online by Carly Hughes. And there's just like a line here, I'll try and find it. Um, uh, so she's talking about the period of which you go unpaid and like sort of the idea of how long you have to pay your dues for. So, but for me, that period went on for a bit too long and on reflection was almost certainly a result of undervaluing myself, which meant I succumbed to yet more unpaid work. Your pay reflects your self-worth and artists repeatedly expect to override that fundamental law, not only of professional engagement, but also of human dignity. That was a really good one. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, well, it's also that idea that art is fun and therefore it should be. Like, you're going to do Privilege. it anyway. You're going to do it anyway, <laughs> so why would you get paid for it? Anyway. Well, this leads to my next slide. This the next slide. slide, which is really funny. Yeah. Um, some of the fun questions that actually I've been asked this week. This week? Yes. Yeah. yeah. This week, a, a few of them, which is great. So I usually answer them with, like, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you feel like every day is a day off? Oh yes. At yes, at three o'clock in the morning when I'm answering emails, I feel like I'm just having a it's really nice so day off. So much fun! It's so much fun. Yes. Because I get to choose my own hours, so I just work all the time. Oh my god, you're living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> and um, would you perhaps be covering for your boyfriend today? Because you don't own you don't own the business, do you? Oh no, no. You couldn't. No, because Pete came in that one time, so he's the owner. <laughs> he looks authoritative. Yes. That's why. It's because he's a redhead. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> um, but no, baby, like, how much do you earn a week? Oh, my God, it's so not your business. <laughs> I love or like what your break even is like so I don't know like the number of people that own small businesses around here whenever you like let loose that you own a small business everyone all of a sudden becomes an expert on how to run a small business yeah or a lawyer or a lawyer yeah or an everyone's accountant. like no, yeah everyone's an accountant 
a lawyer, like they've watched three episodes of Shark Tank, so they know how to run a small business. They're like, what's your break even? What are your sales targets? Tell me now. Have you um, maybe thought, yeah, or like that? Have you have you thought about or have you have you just thought about doing this? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what you should do. Oh, should put a coffee machine in the, in the <laughs> at Junkie Comics. You should have a coffee machine. Oh, okay, yeah. yes, because that's it's then really, I'll be rich. It's, it's a real missed opportunity. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, this obviously applies to all small business um, people, like instantaneously becoming an expert on how to run your business. Um, but I have found, especially for women in the creative business, um, because people still see it as a hobby, they all all know better. Oh yeah, which leads to I think both of our f it's favorite is, word in the English yeah, language. This is my favorite slide, but also my favorite word. Yes, ah, uh, the powerful no. Um, <laughs> so this comes back to um, the idea of working for exposure, but kind of just in day to day life as well, um, in negotiating pay, in setting boundaries, setting boundaries, the kinds of work that you want to do, and also in like setting up your value system for your business, like we were talking about before. What your boundaries are, what your values are, and the kind of work that you want to be aligning yourself with. It's so hard when you first start out to say no to those things. And um, we acknowledge that saying no is a privilege. Absolutely. It absolutely is. Yeah. It's, it's taken me, I, I, I still struggle every day yeah. with putting that full stop at the end of that. I don't struggle o. with saying no anymore, but I struggle with saying, like, not saying no, sorry. Yeah, you taking know? the sorry yeah. away. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but no. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an important word, and if there isn't anything else that you could take away from this talk, is that, you know, setting those boundaries and choosing the kind of work that you do is the most important part. Of, of running your business and this is the best way in my opinion to, to do that yeah exactly and like and the fact that I don't know supporting your peers and like actually if we go to the next slide as well I don't how do I just, just have it yeah. just the thing yeah. oh, I did it. there you go yeah so we're lucky to have each other and we're lucky so to lucky. actually just have someone just to bitch to honestly like it's so helpful so much <laughs> so Please like contact us if you ever want to just yeah it, anything. It's been it's been really great. So again, one of the reasons why we're doing this today is because Flara and I like in our collaboration and in our friendship, like so much of that basis is just spending time drinking and like chatting about owning a business. And we are so lucky to have. And like each other that both run small businesses and having someone to vent to that relates to your experience. And we know that having a small business can be like a really isolating experience, um, especially in creative work. Um, and, you know, having that support system is so, so important. So, yeah. you know, I invite you all. Um, sometimes it takes me a little while to get back, but I promise I will get back to you um, if you want to vent have a bitch, have a whinge, or ask any questions about what we've talked about today. But we'll also have questions soon. But yeah. you can also email me. <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, before we go to questions, I just wanted to make sure that I said thank yous. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you so much to the staff at Mathens for having us at this lovely thank space. Thank you, it's beautiful. Make sure you check out Next Door, it's so lovely. Um, and obviously a huge thank you to everyone that booked in to come in today. It's amazing. I can't believe it was booked out. I was so scared. So nice. I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> Thank you. Happy <laughs> nightmares. Um, and of course, our wonderful MC and organizer of the event, Jacinta. Thank you Thank so you much for having us. And the Creative Mornings team, all of you guys. Like, everything you do every month is just so awesome. And like, I am going to wake up earlier once on Fridays, once every month to come to every single one. Good call. Good call.